Officials Institute, meeting number one, shooting or not? What do you guys think that means? Either guy shooting it or he's not. <laughs> shooting fouls. <laughs> right. So what it comes down to primarily is continuation. And not all the clips that I have today are about continuous motion, but um, a lot of shooting or not, was he shooting, was he not shooting, was, did he get fouled in the act of shooting? Was it before, was it after? So that's what we're gonna go through tonight. Everybody ready? Yes, sir. All right. The first couple I'm hoping to show to kind of set the stage as to what we're going to watch and look for. And then we'll have some without some annotations and markings and see what we can see and figure out. This video is not great. I mean, the quality of the video, but let's see what we got. Okay, the official calls a foul and called it on the floor. Did you see? It looked like he was waving it off. Out of bounds, right there. Do we agree? Disagree? I'm gonna play it slow and let's see what you think then, since you don't wanna answer me now. Would we agree he's starting his act of shooting here? Not yet. So, yeah. has, has he gathered the ball? It's kind Being of a clearer picture, you'd be able to see it. Kind of <laughs> yes, it's a bad picture. Not a problem. Yes. Yes, he gathered the ball. He's dribbling, and then he's starting to pick up the ball here. Yep. Now, if that defender is not there, if there's no defender, what is he going to do with that ball? Go up and shoot. Lay up. So is it fair to say with the defender there, he's going to go up and shoot the ball? Yes? Yeah. Yes. You, can't use, yes. Legit, you can say if, 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 if he didn't do this, if he wasn't there. Is that right? It is right, because the rules state – that a player is in the act of shooting when they start the habitual or usual motion preceding a try for a goal. So it's not the actual try for a goal. We don't have to wait for them to release the ball. We have to start with the motion that precedes that. And I think this motion, he's not dribbling anymore. So therefore there's no other action other than for him to stop and not shoot, right? Or pass. He's clearly going to shoot. We all agree he's going to shoot the ball. Yes, that's mm -hmm. his intent. Right. So his act of shooting, I think, starts here. Then he gets fouled. Now, I realize this is close. You could you could make an argument saying, well, he wasn't going to shoot the ball. He wasn't starting his shot at that moment. You can make that argument. What, what I'm saying is, there's, especially in a situation like this, there's absolutely nothing else that this kid is going to do. He, ha he doesn't even have an option to pass to anybody. He's not going to pull it out. He's not going to say, well, I don't have a clear enough shot to the basket. He is, it's between him and his opponent, right? Yep. And if he doesn't get fouled, he makes a nice, easy layup. It's not his fault that the kid wanted to foul him. So in my opinion, and this is not in the rules book and not, not that I feel like I have to say this, but the rules book does not state the act of shooting starts when you gather the ball. It doesn't say that. And so that leaves a wide door, the motion that precedes your usual you know, sh shot or try for goal, that leaves a wide door of in interpretation. So we can all interpret it in different spots. So I get that. And the whole point of this meeting is to make sure or to try and get everyone closer to the same spot as far as it starts. Because there's too many times that players are shooting the ball, their intent is to shoot the ball, and then they get fouled and we say, no, 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 no shot, out of bounds. Well, if they were trying to shoot the ball, if their intent was to shoot the ball and they had started that motion, we should allow them two shots and or a made bucket if they, if they go. Do we agree? I know some, yes. some of you don't yes. agree. Yes, we'll agree. Yes, yes. All right. So I'm going to play one more time. Do we see a shooting foul on that or no? I do. Yeah. 
Most of you do at least, yeah. the ones willing I to do as something. well. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's find, here's a little bit different. Again, another close one. Got a foul, three point shot, push, and we're shooting three. All right, I'm gonna rewind it fast again and then I'll slow it down and show you what I see. So the official calls a shooting foul. It was a three, clearly outside the arc. Why could I possibly show this video? What's, what's there to learn about this video? Did he come down? All right. Was he still in the act of shooting? A player is in the act of shooting as long as they are an airborne shooter, correct? They don't have to have the ball. The ball can be correct. long gone out of their hands. And if they are airborne, they're still considered in the act of shooting, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. yes. All right, so clearly he's an airborne shooter. The ball has left his hands. Is he not airborne now? He has come down to the floor, has he not? Yes. So yes. is he considered in the act of shooting at this point? Is he considered in the act of shooting? In the act of shooting. <clears throat> yes. Oh. Once that player comes down to the floor, they are no longer an airborne shooter. Therefore, they are no longer in the act of shooting. So that player is a regular player on the ground. Then he gets hit. Now you could argue, when did he get hit before he hit the ground or not? I, I agree with that. That's really, really close. But my point is, if we, if we label the foul after he comes down, that is a regular foul that goes out of bounds. If the ball goes in, he gets three points and he gets the ball out of bounds. If the ball does not go in, he simply gets the ball out of bounds. There are no shots to be awarded on an airborne, on a player who has come down to the floor, then fouled. Do we understand that? Mm -hmm. Now, I know you guys don't get to see what I label these videos, but this one says, are we splitting hairs? Because everybody in the gym on that play thinks that that's a shooting foul. Would we agree with that statement? I mean, all, at least almost. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, it's a shooting foul. How yeah. could you not let him shoot? He was shooting, and then he got fouled. Now, we need to know whether it is or it isn't, but it was so close. I'm not going to split hairs either. If you call it a shooting foul or you don't, fine. I'm okay with whatever you call when, when they're that close. I've done it once, and it was so close. I was right by the video but I took so much grief from the coach because everybody thought it was a shooting foul and it was so close. Sometimes it is easier to say, all right, shooting foul, because not everybody can distinguish whether it was on the floor or still in the air, but there's a distinction to be made. And that's what I'm trying to make on that video. I, did everybody see that distinction? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But most of the time I would say officials are going to call a shot on that. I mm -hmm. think 90 plus percent of the time officials are going to call that a shooting foul. I agree with you. Yes. And 90% plus of the time, actually hundred percent of the time, they're going to be wrong. The whole mm. rest of the gym thinks that they're right. So you could, you know, play the whole game management thing, but if we're here to do it the right way, that's not a shooting foul. <clears throat> I agree with that statement though. <clears throat> but in slow motion, you can see that and what? like, but in real time, it was like almost like a bang bang play. So, you know, like you said, splitting hairs. I'm not doing that. Hundred percent agree. We have mm -hmm. the we right. have the uh, ability to slow it down, freeze frame it, put a circle around the guy. I agree. Um, mm -hmm. I agree. I, I I my comment. I agree with Glenn too because it's just like one of the meetings we had when you say. Is this is this a jump stop? Did he come down, boom boom, or or he's or both at the same time? That's that's the same thing. Did a guy hit the floor or did he get bumped before? Mm -hmm. Calling a shooting foul on that is no no sin, right? That's right. And the discussion I had with that official was it's so close. 
yeah, I fr freeze framed it, but I couldn't even really see where he maybe filed him. Did he get an elbow before that? It's so close. It's not a shame on you. It's a, okay, you had a shooting foul. But it's one of the only videos I have to make the distinction of airborne shooter, not airborne shooter. And just because it is a normal looking, he shot, came down and, and got boxed out. We see that a lot. He gets boxed out after he comes down and they give him sh two shots or three shots. If well, he's down on the ground, that's not a shooting foul anymore. All right. But but if it's a one and one, uh, that person would shoot one and one, right? Correct. It's not a shooting foul. But if it's right. in if it's in the bonus, uh, then it, you do shoot free throws because it's you're in the bonus, right? That's a good okay. distinction too. Doesn't mean you yep. don't shoot. You need to know obviously what situation you're in. All right. All right. Now this is I've showed this before. And I, I like it because one, it's me and it's, <laughs> it looks terrible, which is why I use it. And it's me. And I don't have to make anyone feel bad because I keep calling them out. What do you see on this play? The official called it out of bounds. No shot out of bounds. I'm going to play it again fast. I'm curious. Do you, do you agree? Is it a charge? Is it a block? Is it a shooting foul? Kind of looks a little like a charge. Yeah, I think it's sure a charge looks, as well. It sure looks like an easy charge, does it not? Yeah, I got a charge. All right, I now because it. this is me, I can tell you exactly what that official was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to diagram it for you just so you understand, and then we'll talk about what to do after it. But this is what's going through my mind. Oh, he's got a hand on him right here. All right, I'm going to let that go. Oh, he puts his hand on him again. Oh, all right, should I get this? Should I not get it? Oh, now he's starting to ride him with an arm bar. And he kind of keeps his, and he gets his arm bar. I got to get this. He can't do this the whole way down. So I blow my whistle right as he barrels him over. Okay, so I see foul, foul, foul all the way, which I'm allowing to happen because I want this kid to, you know, maybe make a move to the basket. And when I finally decide it's too much, he does something illegal and barrels into the kid who's taken a charge. So in my mind, I'm justified, but what is the whole gym see? Just like all you saw. The charge. <laughs> if you're gonna let this go, and it's easier said than done, but we need to be aware of the other players on the court. If you're gonna let this go, foul, hand check, then another hand check, and you're letting them go down. And if you're gonna let that go, then you need to let that go all the way to the basket because what is that kid doing? He's not gonna stop. Maybe he'll pass to his number 33 there if he sees him, but he's going to the bucket. So you could say, well, but if he was fouled, you shouldn't, you know, put him at a disadvantage by calling a, a charge. Well, I can agree with that. But if it wasn't really to the level of I got to get that foul the first two times, at least, at least, and if I, if I had to do it all over again, I would have called it after maybe the third one or the second one before it was that close to the charge. Because once the charge happens, the cell is so hard that he was hand checked the whole way down. Oh, but he just played, barreled over my guy. Yeah, he totally ran his guy over. So now, what is the lesser of two evils? You guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah, my my comment on that is you let the guy play through. You let the guy play through. You let the guy play through, and you didn't you didn't stop the game because he beat his man. He beat his man, and then he charged the guy. So that's that's an offensive foul, in my opinion. And the, and the kid was, I mean, we can't see from our angle either uh, from the video, but the kid was for the most part not being hindered in his movement toward the basket, right? right. He was being hand-checked illegally, but he was on his way and he wanted to go all the way. And if he was going to pass to number 33 there, he probably would have done that. But um, he wanted those two points and I get that. So I agree. He, this is a charge. 
because he just barreled all the way through. Getting what? fouled doesn't allow you to foul somebody back. I don't know, this is, it's a tough one. What was the call on the play? The call was a hand check foul out of bounds. Oh, okay. But it wasn't a crowd. It wasn't a crowd pleaser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, back out to the three point line. In transition, fouled on the play. Was it in the act of shooting? No shot, and I agree. Oh, well, well if the announcer agrees, if you have your phone, yeah. <laughs> then he must have got it right. It's just like the internet, right? Everything on the internet. That's right. <laughs> back out to the three so what do we line. think? Shooting or not shooting? Shooting. In transition. Fouled oh, yeah, on the play. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was gathered the during the shooting. initial part to where he was going down to the agree. basket. Let's that see. was like the first video. Right, right there, right there. He picks think, it up right there. I think he's starting the act of shooting here, is he not? Yep. yep. Yeah, that's like the first one you showed us. I agree. There's nothing in his way other than that defender. And when that defender fouls him kind of weirdly. Right there. He is allowed to, to finish his, his foot movements. Now, the ball, did the ball go in? It yeah. did. Okay, the ball went in. That one doesn't show, doesn't show it there, but. Yeah. Play. So let's say, I'm just for argument's sake. In let's say he traveled. Fouled on the play. Was it in the act? What do you do? He traveled, he traveled because of the defender, though. Let's say he traveled, and I would agree with you. Was it, I don't know if he did or did not, but was it because he got fouled? Well, we don't know, and we'll never know because he got fouled, right? Right. Right. Oh, he right. traveled the and the ball goes through the basket. The travel, if there was a travel, so okay, so there's a foul. one way or another, it's a foul. There's a foul. The ball goes in the basket, but as the official, you think he traveled. What do you do? Anybody? If he traveled, think, then it's no shot by that. Right. He, the fact that he committed a violation uh, takes away his active shooting thing. So you're just going to give. Okay, so you're going to wipe the bucket off. You're not going to allow the basket. Right. Which, again, I didn't talk to the official on this game, and, and you didn't really see on the clip um, <clears throat> whether he was calling a no basket but we're still shooting or not. Yeah, uh, he called the no basket. But he called no basket. So let's just say he said it was traveling, and that's why he called it. Do they shoot then, or do they give the ball out of bounds? He called it travel. It's he still shoot bounds. two free throws. Yeah. He still foul. He still fouled him. You still have a foul. You wipe the basket off because uh, you wipe the basket off because he traveled, but he still got fouled in the act of shooting. So he, if you call it travel, so he should still gonna, get two shots. But not if you call it travel. Uh, no, he was fouled in the act of shooting. Yeah. Oh, I agree. But if, if you call it travel. You can't right. say he got fouled. It's right. either he, he got travel fouled. or he either he fouled got fouled or the travel. So it's okay. a foul. So exactly. Oh, no doubt. No okay. doubt. Let's let's talk this through because this is why I brought it up. Because a lot of people don't understand, mostly coaches and fans, and a lot of officials don't understand. Well, if he fouled, he can't travel. If he traveled, he can't foul. Yes yeah. and no. If he gets fouled first, mm -hmm. all other contact is considered what? Incidental, right? So right. if he gets contacted by someone else or he contacts someone else, maybe runs into it with a charge, incidental. Unless it's, in, unless it's intentionally done or flagrantly done, we allow that contact to happen because he already got fouled. But does that mean he can then do whatever he wants to finish that bucket? No. No, so then he travels after the foul. So since he travels after the foul, does that negate the fact that he got fouled in the act of shooting? What is the penalty for being fouled in the act of shooting? Two shots. Two shots. Two shots. He is allowed continuous motion to finish, right. correct? Mm -hmm. If that continuous motion is done in a normal, habitual, usual way, I'm paraphrasing, is a travel a normal or usual way of a layup? No. No, no. it is not. So that negates the continuous motion. So he can no longer have two, the two points that he scored 
but he still got fouled in the act of shooting. And I'm not saying it's an easy sell. I'm not saying you're not going to get yelled at, but by rule, if I get fouled and then I travel and put the bucket in, you don't get the two points, but you do get two shots to attempt because I don't know who it was who said it. That foul may have caused them to it's travel. Bro, they bro. threw off their whole cadence. Maybe they wouldn't have done that right. if they didn't get fouled, but since they got fouled and then they said, oh, wait, I got to go one, two, we don't know. So you yeah. can't penalize the player because he got fouled and threw him off his cadence or whatever it may be. Does that make sense? Yes. It does make sense. So, so Josh, let me ask you a question. So what the difference between gathering and attempting a shot, that's two different things, right? Because you keep saying gather, just because you gather the ball, you're not in the act of shooting. All right. That's a great question because I do say gather the ball a lot. And that is not in the rules book. I have nothing to support that statement. It's a general rule of thumb to help us determine when the act of shooting started. And the right. act of shooting, I don't have, I always have my rules book with me, but I don't. I have it upstairs as I was writing an article. The act of shooting starts before you actually shoot the ball. When, what is a try for a goal? The ball actually has to leave the hands for it to be a try for a goal. Right. But are you in the act of shooting before you le release the ball? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And continuous motion even says, if you've started the act of shooting, you can do the normal things after to finish your shot. But it also says if you get fouled in the act of shooting, in the act of shooting, then you get two shots, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. say you have to, the ball has to be in the air and, and you get fouled for you get two shots. No, if you're in the act of shooting and get fouled. So, I say gather because it's a general rule of thumb of where do we determine, is it here when they gather? Is it here when they pull it up to their head? Is it at the chest? Is it up in the air? Do you have, they have to do a let, you know what I'm saying? There's so many little different variations and, and variables and everyone maybe is a little different, but the gather is a good starting point. Does it mean it's the end all be all end all? No, absolutely not. And that's why there's so much. Um, Subjectivity. <laughs> yes. He was shooting her out of bounds because, and I get yeah. that. And that's why we're going through these now is so we can say, all right, what was he doing? He gathered the ball here. What, you know, what was his mind frame? We don't know what he's thinking, but let's, you know, survey the scene. So that's what we have to do with every play. What was that kid going to do? Let me show another, unless you've got a quick question, but let me show another one, which hopefully can, um, He faked that. <laughs> so let me go back again. This hmm. is another block charge situation with the shot. Yes. Yes. Kind of like the one before. And we could argue whether it's a block or a charge and whether he faked it. I you probably probably flopped a little. I agree. Yep. Here's my problem with the clip. And I'm going to show this first. This is a, a, a legal guarding uh, or a block charge clip. Yep. It looks to me as though he's legal and he runs through him. All right. Taking away the, he flopped or he faked. Right. Looks like he went through. Him. But if it's not, if it's as the official called it, which is a block, the official called a block. And what did the official do? Out of bounds. That's, why that's is it out of bounds? If that's a block, why is it out of bounds? Was he not in the act of shooting? Yes, he is. Oh, yeah. He was, he was in the act right there as soon as he has it in yeah. the hand. Yeah. yeah. So that, since that he's in the act of shooting, yeah. and he looks, in my opinion, he got the call wrong, but, but that's fine. Yeah. You call a block. You got to yeah. let the kid shoot the, the free throws. Yeah. Why is he making that call anyway? Well, that's another. That's, that's that, not the that was two months ago, Glenn. You missed that meeting? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Right. So. So if we're going to call, and we see this a lot, if we're going to call blocks that are charges and you are going to say definitely because he stuck his elbow out or he leaned or he started to fall, fine, however you want to justify it, but don't then say it's out of bounds. Because to me, if you say out of bounds, right, block, out of bounds, that means you know you screwed it up, you know it was a charge, and you don't want to give them two shots and get the call wrong. But if you really think it's a block, 
you got to give him two shots. He was shooting the ball. Yes? <clears throat> Correct. Yes. For sure. For sure. All right. Yes. And then stay in your primary. <laughs> stay in your primary. Yes. <laughs> All right, girls' championship game, 2019. All right, we all saw the official out. He was pretty emphatic, was he not? Wait a second, no shot, he said, because he fouled her, and he kind of pointed. He kind of pointed where she got fouled at, right? Right there. On well, maybe he's pointing on the ground. I hate that, but may, okay. All right, out of bounds. But was it a shooting foul or not? What do we think? Yes? I would have called it a shooting foul. I would have given her the, the uh, continuation. Yep. Did the ball go in? I think it did. Okay. But, but you know there's no continuation in high school basketball, right? Well, there is continuous yeah. motion. Yes, there is. Continuous mm -hmm. motion. Yep. Uh, you're allowed a continuous motion if you're in the act of shooting and get fouled. Right, in the act of shooting. Yeah. So I think she started the act of shooting here because what is, I'm going to go back again. What is she going to do? Is she going to oh. pass to the player behind her she can't even see? No. No, yep. she's going straight to the basket. She's going to the bucket. So then yep. when does she foul her? It looks as though I don't think she fouled her, but he thought that so either. foul. Yep. And if he fouled her, she can continue. Yeah, well, he knew that he, he, knew he a made a bad call. Share. That's why he let that he did that again. It looked like she had all ball. Six of eight in that ball game. So he's saying no shot. The ball did go in. No shot because he got fouled over here. So not only did you take away her continuous motion because she was in the act of shooting, you took away the two points that she got and the extra point that she may get on a, an extra shooting free throw. Yeah. We have to be more aware. And again, that's not just signaling this guy out. It happens a lot. I don't know why we like to wave shots off. No shot, no shot, out of bounds. When, if they're in the act of shooting, I would much rather get yelled at by a coach saying, are you kidding me? He was shooting that? Yeah, he was shooting. I'd much rather get yelled at for that because I know I'm not going to take away that kid's ability to take those points than... You know, the kid who fouled him now in the act of shooting got a huge advantage by keeping that two points away from him. Well, that's well, that's why you know, we've talked about before, uh, have a slow whistle. So if that guy waited one more second and then blew his whistle, he could have banged that thing home if he wanted to. Or yeah. And I, or, or, let the, or let the girl lay it in. You got no foul. Right. And I, I think that was uh, James. I don't know if it was you or not, but someone said, I'm going to let that go. It might've been Mike. Yep. Yeah, that letting was that go and let her continue on to take the shot. Me too. Me too. And that's where I've said this in a couple meetings before leeway. When we officiate contact is not just contact is not just a foul, right? Contact is a foul. Contact is a foul. No. For, first of all, incidental contact is written into the rule book. So it gives us some leeway, but if a kid gets fouled, legitimately fouled but it's slight and then they want to continue on and they get two points easy points the coach doesn't want to foul on his kid and the other coach wants the two points they don't want it to take it away so just let it play on we have to allow a certain amount of leeway um, and let some slight doesn't mean all slight you no know, contact needs to be passed on but you know lots of times you'll see it more with lower level officials who are learning the philosophy they call, when they see contact, they blow their whistle and they call a foul and they're right. But if you allow some of that contact to move and get a flow for the game, then the game will be much better and uh, not will just flow better, but the kids will be happier. So, all right. More with it as well now. Moore has his man leave him and drives the paint. Okay, say calling it, no, out of bounds. The shot there. Out of bounds, not a shot. I'm going to play it fast again. This is kind of similar to the all the others. It is well now. What do we think? Is he shooting or is he not shooting? Moore has his man leave him and drives the paint. Oh, definitely he's, shooting. He's shooting. But he took like two steps after he got fouled. I think he's in the act of shooting here for sure. Yep. And I don't even know if he got fouled on this one either, but they're saying he got fouled. Okay, maybe he got fouled here. Maybe he yeah. got fouled on the block. 
Now, do you see there's kind of two separate motions there before he yeah, shoots? Yeah, this is another one where he travels. So th that's where I'm going to, what, what, what I want to talk about. Uh, hold on, hold on one second. What, honey? Okay. Well, when did he call the foul? Was it the first or the second? I thought it was the second one. Well, that's what I don't know. And that's why I put that, was he calling, was he calling, oh, uh, come on. This a foul? No. Or was he calling that a foul? I think he was calling the second one a foul, but I don't yeah. really know. Well, you can tell he hasn't put his fist up yet. But nope. Yeah, but, you know, there's usually a delay on fouls. But I think you're right. I think, but, you know, playing it slow, it was probably that one. But my point is, he's in the act of shooting here. Would we not agree? He's starting to gather the ball. What is he going to do? He may pass the ball to 54, but if he's a smart player, there's three players in his way and a defender on that player. So do you think he's probably going to pass it? Probably not. He continues on. And he gets fouled here. I would say if he gets fouled here, and again, I don't know if uh, an actor shooting, maybe he picks up the actor shooting here. Maybe when he gets fouled here, you could make the argument that he takes two steps and then goes up, right? But my point is, is he not allowed to take his normal one and a half steps after he starts the act of shooting? The answer is yes. He's allowed his, and there's, this isn't the only thing that it says, but he's allowed his usual leg movement. Usual leg movement in a layup is one, two. Yes? Yes. So just because he got bumped, and I'm, I'm again, I'm going with the first file on this, this statement. Just because he gets bumped and slows up his cadence again, his rhythm, he's still allowed to go one, two with his normal layup. So no matter what happens or how awkward it looks, if it if there was no defenders around him and if it was a, a legal move, he's allowed to finish. Do we understand that? It's not that he went one, two, and then did a spin. That would be a whole different new action. It wouldn't be usual to what he was doing. If he started in a spinning motion, he'd be allowed to finish spinning. But if he's going forward and then stops and spins or you know stops maybe in pivots and then goes up, that negates it because it's not the usual motion that follows. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. Now, I'm not saying these are easy by all means, but. A down street for Bowman. He just couldn't get it go. Good look, though. Michael Taylor inside to Outlaw. Bowman avoids his third foul, but maybe not. All right. They call a foul. I'm assuming it's a shooting foul. He didn't signal. I'm going to play it fast again. What do you all think? Sure looked like he was shooting. Okay. Let's look at this slow. And this is a nice, it's a state championship game. What do you think so far? I would say during the first motion, he was technically in the act of shooting because as you saw, he tried to go up with it, but then lost control. First of all, did he actually get fouled? Oh, first of all, was this a held ball? Yes. Yes. He's yes, in the act of shooting down. here, and what does the defender do? Prohibits him from releasing the ball on a try for a goal. That is textbook definition of a held ball. You call a held ball there? You don't have any of that other garbage that happens after. Call the held ball. You could say, well, the ball kind of got knocked loose. The ball didn't get knocked loose, in my opinion, until after he stopped him. Look at that. And then he brings it down. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's and then he kind of loses it. So that's a held ball. All right. But moving past that, do you see that little blue? I tried to mark the arm. Mm -hmm. Did he get fouled or did the ball get knocked out of his hand? Ball got knocked out of his hand. But he called a foul on number eleven, though he didn't call it on the other guy. I, I understand. I don't think eleven call. I don't think eleven hit him. I don't know about his body right there. Eleven is. So you think on. maybe eleven's pushing into him? All right, I can yep. see that. I can With see that. Shoulder. He was going for the ball, and he kind of pushed into his hips as he went up. But yep. he's calling a hold. Oh which, yeah. But you know, I, again, I don't want to. 
harp on the guys. A lot of guys, guys will go like this. They got a foul. They don't know what happened. So they just go like this or they go like this. In, in his defense, there were three guys on him with a lot of ball movement and arm movement. There had to have been a foul, right? My point to that is if he got fouled, it was definitely a shooting foul. Definitely. He was in the act of shooting. But don't call a shooting foul just because there's arms flailing or you right. think it looks like a foul. Know if it's a foul or not. Because if it's a clean block and like kid pokes it out, now again, if he if he pushed him with his arm, I get that. But all the arms, the arms that I saw on that clip looked clean. They were flailing, they were poking for the ball, but nothing kept that guy from shooting the ball. Yeah, if you didn't call something though, those coaches would have been crazy. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And sometimes you got to make a call to make everyone happy. But I hate saying that because yeah. if it's not a foul and you know, right. you're penalizing those kids for doing nothing wrong. Yep. Bad defense, maybe. All right. But the other guy, uh, the center had a foul too. And then he dropped his arm. Well, good that he dropped his arm because it wasn't his primary call. Right. I'm going to play that again. I want to see. Yep. So Something happened. <laughs> down the for Bolton, but he just couldn't get a goal. Good look, though. Michael Taylor inside to Outlaw. Bolton avoids his third foul, but the center. All right, now this is not mm. about this is not about mechanics, but why is the center all the way on the sideline? Mm -hmm. Where are all the players? He should be. He should be. Yes. Well, he should be up by the three-point line at least. Now it's easier said than done. I get that. But the good thing that he does do is when he blows his whistle, he comes right in. So well, that's good. But it wasn't his primary call, and he let it go, which is also good. He knew that it wasn't his area, and his partner got it, and so good, we got it. I still don't think it was a foul, although I think it was James again. I think 11 did push yep. him with his shoulder. I think you're right. But that's a held ball. We call that. We don't have to worry about all the other garbage that happens after. All right. Questions at this point. I'm going to play a few that don't have marked out and let's see what, let's see what we come up with. I hope we're all closer to the same. What do you think? He traveled. <laughs> He called a block. Right, you saw that, right? He called a block. I don't have it slowed down. Uh, if he called the block, regardless of whatever else you had, he called the block. That's what we're going with, the call of the floor. So is it shooting or not shooting? Mm. That's a shooting foul. He's yep. shooting the ball, shooting. is he not? Yep. All right, let me see if I can play this a little bit slower. Here we go. He's coming down. What is he doing here? Shooting the ball. Okay. He's gathering with his left he's foot. Gathering out the, floor, the ball. So now again, the left foot to see. I don't know if you know you guys want it like want me to keep using the word gather or not, but again, at this point, his intention is to shoot the ball. Do we not all agree? Yep. Yes. And what does he actually do? Shoot the ball. Oh, wait. He actually shot the ball? So we know at this point he was going to shoot the ball, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, yep. that's what I wanted to talk about earlier. I think uh, we were talking about gathering and how do we know this. And uh, We have to watch the whole play. If they don't mm -hmm. shoot the ball, then you can make the determination, well, I'm not so sure he could have done this, he could have done that. Fine. I could understand how you can – argue or make the justification that he wasn't shooting the ball but when the player actually shoots the ball at the end of the play that should solidify in your mind he was going to shoot the whole time very few players and some of them are smart enough but very few players can get fouled and say i'm going to shoot the ball and get two shots and there are some out there that can and in my opinion if they're that smart they should be allowed to shoot the ball free throws as well because they were smart enough to know i was in the act of shooting or at least it looked like I was in the act of shooting, got fouled and I'm going up. But most kids at the high school level, if they're going to shoot the ball, they're going to shoot the ball. If they're not going to shoot the ball, they're not going to shoot the ball. In fact, how many times, not many, but have we seen players who was going to the bucket 
and they got fouled. It looked like they were totally going for a shot, and then they dished off to their, their, their buddy. It happens because most kids, again, if that's what they were going to do, that's what they're going to end up doing. So do you follow what I'm saying? If they shoot the ball, then the foul before that, we need to know that they were shooting the ball. Now, we have to know when they were fouled, but in this one, I think it's clear the foul happened after he gathered the ball and his intention was to shoot it. And that little spin around move a little bit here. Let's see if I can go back where he's got to, okay, he's here, but he's not squared up, right? He's not squared up, but his usual motion to shoot the ball from here would be to do this little spin. That is a usual motion that is allowed by the continuous motion rule. Anyone disagree? That's a shooting foul. So if you're going to call a block on that, and I don't think the defender should have gotten a foul yeah. at all, in my opinion. I don't, yeah, I there's don't no foul. So but if you are going to call a foul on that, it's got to be a shooting foul. Intendedly, if that referee called a block in that situation, if it was in the after shooting, it should have been two shots anyways, right? Because at the end, because at the end of that video, you could see him calling for the block at the end. You did say that again, Shelby. Uh, when the when when the kid was oh, shooting in the, the after shooting, the the referee in the corner was showing the block signal. Since he was in the after shooting. Wouldn't that be two shots anyways because it was a block? I mean, because I did see it played his day. Referee right there, the top right. Play for it. The one who's reporting. Yeah. They block right there. And then points out of bounds. But if he's an actor shooting, it shouldn't be out of bounds. should be. And that should be a shooting foul. That's exactly what I'm saying, Shelby. If he called the block, he needs to know, all of us officials need to know that he was in the act of shooting. So he has to shoot. We can't say it was a block, but he wasn't shooting yet. I thought it was pretty clear. It wasn't even a, that one's a close one. But my point is, I think too many guys have already in their mentality, block foul, out of bounds. Block foul, out of bounds. Block foul, out of right? Because he, he didn't, the ball wasn't in the air. He was still doing an motion, but continuous motion says they're allowed to finish that motion that they start. So that's, um, that's exactly what we're saying. All right. How about this one? We have no, we have a whistle. We do have a whistle because he counted the bucket. I didn't see a hand in the air for a fist. Maybe because he's counting the three here. Yep, there's the fist. Okay. The ball went in. He counted it for three. What do you think? Shooting or not shooting? In practice, we're always going to call this a shooting foul. And I think he stopped it from coming down to his normal landing, which makes it a shooting. That one was real close there, Josh. Yep. I mean Definitely is close. Now you could say, "Oh, the flap." <laughs> did he? You could say, "Did he stick him with his arm?" Maybe. Yep. But does the does the trail official see that that happened? No, he's straight lined. Not from that angle. He stacked himself. So, if he calls that out, fine. But how can he see that? Maybe he says he landed on his foot. I can't tell if he did or not. It's really close though, right? Oh, he landed on his foot, so he didn't allow him to come down. Okay? Yes? Are we with that so far? Yeah. Even though he's jumping forward, you're not allowed to go into that space after he's left the air. So I get that. Not much. Josh. But here's my problem. How does the kid fall? He's trying to drop. Stepped on his foot. Yeah. But why, how does he fall? He falls he to trying to draw a foul. If he steps on his foot, is his foot going to land and then kick out in front of him? Nope. No. I think, now again, I don't know for a fact, but I think that kid took a dive to get a call. Right. Was there some contact? Probably. Did his foot come out? Maybe. But it wasn't enough, in my opinion, to call a foul. And then when he does that to, like, ex try to uh, ex exaggerate, I'm passing. 
I'm me personally, coach. He just fell down. He got hit. He fell down on his own, which it looks like he fell down on his own, whether he got fouled or not. So if he gets fouled and he gets, you give him the foul based on the merit, I'm okay with that, but not because he falls down. Kids do that a lot. They fall down on all sorts of situations because they know the chances of them getting a foul are much greater if they fall down than if they keep their balance. Agree with that statement or no? Absolutely. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I think it's got to be a case by case because I would have thought that the guy hit him and then he came down on his foot. Now, how you fall, it, de it depends on you as an individual, right? Well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I, I can't say that that kid doesn't fall that way normally. I, I right. don't know. Right. But I do know when taking a physics, physics class, certain <laughs> things happen when contact happens a certain way a usual reaction happens another way. And that didn't mm. look like physics played into that fall. Now you were right. Maybe that's the way it happened. And it doesn't matter. He called the foul, counted the three points and gave yep. the free throw. So you go on with that. And I think someone else had said though, that's one of those plays where everyone is expecting a foul anyway. He fell down yep. and if you call a foul, you're not gonna get into trouble. You're gonna get into more trouble not calling a foul. But my personally, yep. I'd rather get in trouble and not reward that player mm. for falling and you know, uh, James, I get it. Your point is we don't know. And right. that's why we get paid the money because we have to make those decisions. Yep. All well, right. Like, like you were saying, Josh, though, that the, the guy was stacked. So he can't even see if the guy hit him on the arm. So I know this mm. is a uh, pos positioning, getting, getting a right position meeting, but he's out of position. He should have be two steps forward. Then he can see the space in between the shooter. You know what I mean? The guy's stacked. He can't, he can't see either way. But he was the trail, wasn't he? Yeah. He was the trail. Um, and I will say this. If I remember properly, I talked to him after that, and he said he got the arm jab. He jabbed him in the stomach. Hmm. And kids do that a lot, too, and we don't call yeah. it, and we need to. If he yeah. jabs them in the stomach, that's illegal. So I was okay with him calling the foul. I just watching the, the tape didn't see how he could see that at his angle. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Doesn't mean it wasn't there. Doesn't mean he didn't see it, but we got to put ourselves in a little better position to be able to catch that. So yeah, it, it, if those kids it, jab in the stomach, that's a foul. But Josh, let me ask you, if he's the trail, uh, how could he have gotten in a better position? Because then he would have been down by the free throw line. All right, let me pull it up. Let's take a look. Sometimes, especially when the shot's going up like that, there's nothing wrong with stepping down and having two center step or early. You're going to close down on the shot. Yeah, I mean, he should have taken two steps forward and he would have been in a much better position. All right, so he's got the ball here. Instead of moving down toward the ball, he could have moved towards the middle. Maybe move over. Now, James, to your point, yeah. I think I, I don't want to be overly critical that he was stacked because this is this play goes bang, bang, two seconds. It's in and it's out. So how can he move so quickly to get a better shot, a better view? I agree. I agree. And we have to do the best we can with the view that we have. He could have hey, known. Josh, I don't think his starting position is very good. He should be starting on that 28 foot mark by the coach's box. And then he would have been able to see between mm. it all the way. He's too deep from the. He's, he's too yeah, far up right point. now. Yeah. That's what I say. He's too deep. Yeah. If he's down and I know I can't use my, my arrow, but if he's down by, I'm assuming it's the 28 foot mark, but that coach's box painted on the other side. Mm -hmm. We see that line up, up, away from the state of Illinois in the IHSA. Yep. Yeah. If he's down that far, then he could have moved in toward the end line. And when that ball came in and had a great look at it. That's yeah. what I don't worry about when, when we're doing working just games in general, don't worry about getting beat down the court. I know guys like to, critique and say, Hey, you got to hustle back or, Hey, you got to, I'd rather get beat and have a better look in a front court situation because where's an 80% of the, the play happening in the front court and set up offense, that transition stuff. If there is a ball stolen and there's a transition, it's going to be a lot easier play to determine because there's going to be one and maybe a defender than in the front court where there's 10 players all jammed in together. So worry less about getting beat on a fast break and more about getting in the right position in the front court. 
Easier said than done sometimes. And I, I realize that too. All right, how about this one? No foul called. Was it a shooting foul or not? I'm going to play it fast again. Was it a shooting foul or did he flop? Flop. How does he fall? Stepped on his foot. Maybe he stepped on his foot, but both of his legs, both of his legs completely crumpled down to the floor. Is that what happens when you step on one leg? You both legs crumple. Now, again, to your point, we don't know for a fact if that's how he falls when that happens. I, I get that. But generally speaking, a player is not going to probably fall up. The foot's, they're close. And the other, his right foot, his right foot, he just lets give way to fall. Like, oh, I better fall on this because I, my right foot, my left, his right foot crumples. His left foot gets tangled. I, I I don't know what the answer is, but I think that's a flop in my opinion. The official on the floor did too. Was it, was it not? I don't know, but we have to see and uh, analyze how a player falls on that. It was a good no call. I mean, I don't think there was really much at all, but as he fell, he did kind of fall weird. You know, I mean, it wasn't like he took a jump shot and just came straight down. So his body, he himself did something weird. So, um, but I think it was a good no call. No. And, and I do think on plays like where they, one lets a player, one player jumps and lands on another player's foot. I think those are awkward falls. So those could be legitimate because if you can't land properly and you're expecting to land properly. So I can understand that. Um, but no, again, so I'm, I'm a little cynical because I see so many plays where kids just fall. Yeah. Because they're trying to get a call. So the most important thing to take away from plays like this, I'll see if I can pull it up again when I'm talking, is we have to not just see how they fall. That's good too. But we have to see them fall, right? If you watch this play and you don't know what happened, you don't know if he landed on his foot, you don't know if he got hit, bumped by a hip, you don't know, then how can you possibly rule on whether he flopped or not? So – it is so important as the trail official, whoever, whatever officials on the shooting action, you stay with the shooter. We've all heard that, right? Stay with the shooter. Mm -hmm. And that's why we stay with the shooter. 80% of the time, nothing happens. But that 20%, or maybe it's less than that, when something does, and if you know exactly what happened, you can go to the coach and say, coach, I saw the whole thing. I was watching it. It was fine. He came down together. There was no, you know, contact. Maybe contact was minimal, whatever. And you move on. But we have to know. We can't guess. All right, it's 8 o'clock. You guys uh, done or you want to see one more? I can do one more. Oh, one is, more for the road. What all the right, heck? this is a not a favorite necessarily, but it, it's, a, it's a shooting, non-shooting, but I got a different take on it. It's kind of a long clip. That's the action. I want to play the action one more time. And then I'm going to let it play out. What do you guys think? Shooting or not shooting? Give me your answers before I continue on. Shooting or not it's, shooting? If it's a foul, it's a shooting. All right. So he's calling a foul. And I'm not going to question the foul because okay. this is about shooting or not shooting. So he called a foul. It is a foul. Do you have it shooting or not shooting? Shooting. 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 I'd well, shooting. I'd give him a shooting. Okay. So the official's not so sure. So he comes and asks for, for some help. I don't know what they're discussing. I'm going to pause it as soon as he walks away. All right. That was about five seconds. Maybe a little bit longer. If you're not sure if the player is shooting or not, what are you asking your partner? Hey, can you, can you tell me what's, what, what happened there? I didn't quite see the play. You called the foul, so you know what happened. Just go, was he shooting or not? Do you think he was shooting or not? And let your partner say yes or no, or I don't know, right? That takes one second. Why are we talking for five seconds? And then he comes to the other official, asks the same question. Look how fast that conversation went. Did you see that? 
Yeah. Because Plus. in that conversation, he said, do you, th did you think he was shooting? Yeah. He was shooting the ball. So he walks to the table and he announces that he's shooting the ball. Okay. But look what he does now. Does this look like, does this look like pandering to me? <laughs> coach, yeah. oh, come on, coach. Let me tell you, come on. All right. It was, it was an okay call call. Come on, coach. Who cares if the coach likes it or not? If he says, are you kidding me? He was, yes. And move on because in my opinion, now that's the, that's it slow. And we can argue whether it was a foul or not, but he was definitely a shooting foul. Yes. 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 All 10 players thought it was a foul shooting <laughs> foul too. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a shooting foul. So again, my point is, if you need to ask for help, I get it. I totally understand. Sometimes we have a foul, but, oh, I didn't know when. Fine. I'm okay with that. But as a partner, and not necessarily as the, the official asking for help as a partner, come in. You say, was he shooting or not? Just give your yes. No. I don't know. That's it. One second. Then he went, when you saw, when he went to the second official, was he, sh yes, he was shooting. Oh, oh, okay. And he moved on. And then. Don't go and pander to the coach. Don't try and make him feel better about the call. The coach is upset. Nothing you say is going to make him think that that was a shooting foul, right? He mm. may later on watching the tape or sleeping it over, realize that it was a shooting foul or whatever. But at that moment, it's not a shooting foul to him. Don't belabor it and make him, oh, come on, coach, like me. You know, I made a good call. Let me tell you how good it was. I guess I'd explain to you. He doesn't care. What do you think guys better on shooting or not shooting? Was it clear? Was it not clear? Because I've had lots of feedback when I go over continuous motion, some guys get it. Some guys don't. Some guys tell me I screwed it all up. I didn't explain it well. So I'm, I'm curious. What do you guys think? It was what you were talking about is in my mind. And, and I, I mean, I, it was clear to me. All clear right, to good. me. Yeah, for Josh, for, for, for me, so many other camps that I've been to, so many assigners always say, gather, I, I know you meant, you talked about gathering and those type of phrases. There should be an attempt to the basket, right? So then it becomes, what is truly an attempt to shoot the basketball, right? As opposed to just saying, I'm taking the ball to the lane and I'm getting ready to make a layup. So to me, I mean, I, I appreciate what you did. I'm still not totally crystal clear on that, you know, whether I'm attempting or am I gathering or whatever the case might be. So, I mean, I think this helps, but again, I think there's still a little gray right there's there. A, there's a lot of gray. There's a lot of subjectivity because of the way the rule is written. So I get that. And yes, gathering the ball does not necessarily make it in the act of shooting. The gather alone, because otherwise that would be written into the rule. You yeah. Can, you can gather the ball for many reasons. And so that's why you have to witness what happened. Did he make a move to the basket? Did he actually mm -hmm. shoot the ball? Was he mm -hmm. unable to shoot the ball because he got fouled, but you thought he was going to shoot the ball, right? The situation yeah. warrants that he was going to shoot the ball, even though he didn't get off. So you have to factor all those things in. And then after you call the foul, you have to rewind that action and say, okay, well, wait, when did he actually make that decision and start his action to shoot the ball? Usually it yep. starts at the gather, but again, it's not an end all be all. It's, it's, it takes a lot. That's why we get paid the money to make the judgment. Yep. And sometimes we judge it wrong and that's okay. I mean, it's, yep. we don't want to judge it wrong, but we're all human. I, Absolutely. I, I, I like your point, Josh, because I think a lot of times from just us watching these videos now, that many times officials call the ball out of bounds when the guy is actually shooting because they don't let the play develop and finish. So they call foul and they're like, okay, out of bounds. Well, the kid was actually shooting. If he let the play finish, the kid was shooting the ball. That's so I like, I like the videos. I think they were more, they were great. So you can, that's my point. Well, that's my, that's my hope is to at least give a little more clarity in the right direction. Doesn't mean you have to walk away and say, boy, I got it, man. That was, that was no, but 
are we moving in that direction? Because too many officials are way across the board on different spectrums. And that's not good either. We should be closer and closer together. Even though there's going to be variations, we should be closer together. Well, that's the point. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Season Thanks, one in Josh. the can. I'm meeting one in the can next uh, month, August 19th. It's the third Thursday. And again, to reiterate, meetings this year are always the third Thursday of every month except for the very last one. And I'll give everyone a heads up on that. But the third Thursday, it's always at seven o'clock. So August 19, handling coaches. And this one's a little bit harder to have video on because how do you know exactly what to show when you're handling a coach? But it's going to be more about conflict with coaches and, and conflict resolution with coaches and when they get upset or when they're happy or, you know, things like that happen a lot where you coach, you, you joke around with the coach and, and oh, okay, they move on. But there's sometimes you go to joke with a coach and it doesn't work at all. You got, you got to know your situation. You got to know your coach. And sometimes we think we know, sometimes they're a buddy of ours or, you know, like, you know, them well, and then you still say something wrong, which sets them off. So things happen. And how do we handle them after they happen? That's kind of what we're going to talk about. So hopefully you can make it. If not, we'll put it on YouTube like we usually do. Um, when I put it on YouTube, guys, send it out, send the link to somebody to watch. It's the only reason way we're going to get the word out and all get together is if we start watching the same stuff, thinking the same way, enjoy the rest of your summer until we see you in August. All right, cool. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> all right, Thank you. Josh. Thanks a lot, Josh. Good job. Take care guys. All right. See ya. All right. Take it easy. <laughs>